Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we're in Southern Ireland hunting seeker. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, this week we head off to the south of Ireland. Um, I'm chasing one of my favourite deer species, Sika. Um, I particularly like Sika because they're a challenging deer. And I like Southern Ireland. I mean, the hospitality is legendary. Um, we were invited by Martin Curran from Midlands Deer Stalking to have a look at some new ground that he's got uh, and a new venture that he's setting up. So it's quite nice for us to get over and look at a, a new piece of ground. Uh, we're a bit late in the evening to actually get out for an evening stoke, so we just had a quick uh, check of the rifle. I didn't take my own rifle over this time because it was basically fairly short notice uh, arrangement and we didn't want to mess around with the paperwork, so basically I agreed to borrow Martin's rifle. But we did manage to get out uh, early morning the following day for a stoke. Um, it's cold. It's cold. Very, very bitterly cold conditions. Um, basically the plan was to go into a commercial forestry block which is very similar to our own ground over here, uh, some replant, mixed age of conifer sitka spruce, um, ground that the seeker love, a lot of thick cover for them, um, so that was the plan. Okay, we were fairly quickly into some deer actually. There were some deer uh, down below us in a hollow, really first light, as is often the case with them. Two just in that scrubby corner. I saw him indicate on the track. But by the time we kind of got into a position where we could maybe look down with the potential for the shot, they'd ghosted off like only Seeker can do. And we were then faced with quite a tricky wind which was kind of swirling round into a block up to our left. Um, the back edge of that block would have been sheltered so I think Martin knows his ground well and, and I think we both sort of took the view that with the cold wind blowing in uh, probably the best option would be, to, would be to work around the wind and come back into the back, back edge of the block because I think if Seeker were going to be feeding anywhere they would probably be in the trees there where it was sheltered. Um, so that was the plan. We worked in a big pincer movement and actually a really good stalk, it was a nice stalk, some fairly tricky working through thick cover 
Um, it's what I like, that good field craft, very, very slow, very, very quiet. And we got into uh, a group of seeker hinds that were in the back edge of the wood. No idea we were there, probably 60, 70 metres away. And then it was just a matter of trying to get a, a nice shot um, down a rack of trees. Um, had to move a couple of times to get the shot, but eventually selected a deer from the group and, and, uh, and got the shot. So that was a successful start. So very pleased with that. Can't see it. Grand. Congratulations, Good stalk, I enjoyed that. Proper stalk. Proper stalk. Good field craft. It's a big loop all the way around. We'd seen these deer. They were just in this corner, weren't they? Corner of wood. The wind wrong, so good work right through. Cold morning. You know your ground when you know you you knew they were going to be in here out the out of the wind. So it's a hell of a big loop. It's a pity we didn't get the, the one down in the bottom there. Nice stalk. We are good animals, yeah, good condition. Good eating this. This one's going back to the Ayrshire table. Good lad. So we did a growlick in the, in the wood and uh, quite a long way back down to get to the vehicle. So by the time we got back down to the truck, we sort of um, had a bit of lunch um, in the field, which was quite nice. Uh, and then the plan for the for the afternoon was to move over to a, a new piece of ground. Um, I think that the terrain would probably be a mixture of the commercial forestry block that I'm used to in the southwest of Scotland, but also interspersed with a lot of the small farms, a lot like we used to have in Yorkshire in the old days. So small farms, non-intensive agriculture, lots of margins, field margins, hedgerows. I mean, I like stoke in that sort of situation. So that's where we kind of arrived and. Beyond one of the farms is a kind of largish sort of scree bank and a hill and then quite a high forest up on the edge of the, of the moor. Uh, and we, we, we sort of worked up through the scrubby gorsey bank. The plan being to get up on the high ground and glass down and then for the two, two hours before dark have a look and see if we could see some deer and stalk into them. Um, the sun had come out by this time and it actually warmed a little corner of the wood and we were treated to quite a nice spectacle of some lovely seeker stags which had, which had come out into the little quiet corner, feeding, enjoying themselves in the sunshine. Quite a good group of stags, some quality animals. Um, so that certainly bodes well for the, for the stag season coming on. Obviously some nice seeker in there, some real metal class stuff. So it's good to see but not on the menu for, for, for today. So we continued up the hill um, to stick to plan B, which was to, to get onto a plateau and look down into the, the high uh, the conifer forest just to see if we could see Seeker on the edge of that. Nice 
see this stag just looking down at us right on the edge of the rock face there. As we were working up the up the bank, um, we could see deer laid down above us in, in, on the edge of the scree bank and spent a bit of time glassing and we got a, again another nice um, stag just on the edge of a rocky outcrop, clearly sat enjoying himself in the afternoon sunshine. Um, we had to go past it so eventually lifted him and, and, and get a good you get a good side of him as he kind of went off towards the forest we were going into actually. cold again um, not a lot of deer evident but w the bit of the wood that we could see was, was was getting hit by the real cold wind so again we thought we'd, we'd, we'd drop down for the last hour of daylight and come around the back of the wood again and watch the corner of the wood and hopefully get some deer moving as the light faded and it went towards the, the evening down into that gully. I never say that till I can actually see it. <laughs> I've done that before and gone and there's been no deer there. Positioning was perfect but even then they're so hard these deer. It never ceases to amaze me. I mean I would have just expected that deer to drop. Um, so we needed Sam just to help us search for it. He's going to eat the deer. <laughs> Pretty much dead in a straight line where it had run. So that was deer two for the ah, for the day. Yeah. Related Man, related <laughs> great. So sort of heading home um, after a couple of days. Really, we were extremely, extremely well looked after. Um, it's great hospitality in the south of Ireland. Met some lovely folk. Very welcoming. Uh, we were treated to some um, Guinness, as you might imagine. A lot of home baking from the from the farmers, families we met, as the places that we went around to have a look at. Um, Martin was an excellent host, and um, I think it's probably suffice, fair to say that we will uh, we will definitely be back. I think the one thing about Martin, though, which I, I really like, he's like me, is about deer management. So he's he's basically setting up a real good um, uh, uh, system of monitoring the deer accurate deer counts, making a good plan on, on what he needs to take in terms of, of, of the of sort of deer management as, aspect and he's going to be very careful and selective about how he manages the, the males because uh, a lot of females there so probably a little, little bit of work needs to be done on them first and then he can sort of see where he is but yeah good crack, good crack. so lucky in this industry that for most of us anyway I hope it's a it's a passion really um, first and uh, and a job second this year shooting times celebrates its 140th birthday 
We want this to be a celebration of shooting times, but also a celebration of so many of your brands who we've sort of partnered with over the years and shortlisted this year for shooting apparel of the year, rifle ammunition of the year, optics product of the year over a thousand pounds, night vision product of the year. So shotgun of the year. Innovative product, gamekeeper of the year. And the winner is... Hi, I'm David Snapley from Browning and we are the very proud winners of the 2022 Shotgun of the Year. Whee! I'd just like to say thank you very much to everybody that nominated the gun and voted for it and um, another winner. Thank you very much. We're here at the British Shooting Show 2022 and I'm delighted to say the Sportsman Gun Centre was Retailer of the Year. We're lucky enough to you know, win it three times now. Um, we're delighted to win this award. It's a real great achievement for us. Thank you to the British public. So the winner of Gundog Trainer of the Year is Eleanor Swift. Yeah, it feels really good. Um, very proud. I know quite well a couple of the other trainers and I know how good their dogs are and I know how good they are. So yeah, I am genuinely really flattered to even be nominated with them. It is a big honour. Hi, I'm Imogen at the GMK stand with the Bretta Ultra Leggero, which won Innovative Product of the Year at the British Shooting Awards this year. Thank you everyone for voting. Here I have the Tigger T3X Super Varmint Serico, which won Rifle of the Year at the British Shooting Awards. This is Peter Antonio from Swarovski Optic. We're at the British Shooting Show 2022. Um, we were fortunate enough, privileged actually, to win the Best Optics Award last night. It's Fantastic that it's been voted for by the public. So to win the award was a was very special for us. Hi there, I'm Ben McWayne. I'm the team shooter with Edgar Brothers. So we're on the Hornady stand today and really happy to receive the prize for the GMX range. We're, we're so happy to, to win the award. So thank you very much and thank you for everyone for their votes. Hi everyone, it's Mark from Thomas Jacks here on stand at the British Shooting Show. I'm here with the Helion 2 XP50 Pro, winner of the Night Vision Product of the Year over £1,500. I'd just like to say a big thank you to everyone for voting and we look forward to continuing to show the product to everyone over the coming months. Nominations for Professional Stalker of the Year and the winner is Chris Dalton. It's just really nice that it's not an industry-led thing, it's kind of the, the, the people that are out there, the guys that we, my clients really, stalkers, and it's just such, it's just such a good experience to be um, recognised. Finally, I'd like to say thanks very much to the British Shooting Show. It's really amazing, I think, what they do here. And I think when you speak to people here, there's lots of people who've just got into the sport. Uh, and I think that's a really wonderful thing that the team have achieved. So thank you too to all of our other sponsors as well. ATM, Outwear, Zeiss, Browning, Hornady, Kite Optics and Pulsar. Thank you very much and I hope you have a very good show. <laughs>